another day, another car. So what is this, Anesh? Um, Dodge Coronet. Dodge Coronet? Yeah. Bit of a beast, isn't it? Yeah, but they changed the carb on it. Put a um, Idle Brock performance manifold on it, and a big four barrel carburetor, which they never had. But none of the choke was connected, all the kick downs not connected. So I just got to make the choke work and all the throttle brackets and all that rubbish, really. Well, your automatic choke is that's holding the choke on now. That's what I call. It's a bimetallic strip. So it's an electronic one, some are done by heat, some are done by electricity. So as you turn it on, you power that up, that unit, and that will slowly unwind the bimetallic spring so the choke comes open the warmer it gets. But that is connected to this, which is your throttle stop. If you look here, so as it comes down, so what you do is you put your foot on the throttle before you start it, and that's held there in that choke position, yeah? Okay. So you'd have to hold that up by means of a rod which goes between there and that hole there, yeah? Okay. And then, imagine that's got a slight bit of tension on it. As you, as you heat it and as you drive the car, see that clicking down each notch? Oh yeah. That's letting the choke back off. So when the choke's right off, you then your throttles on your tick over stop here, as opposed to running on the choke. So I've got to make that rod fit between there and there. When that's on, it's notched there. That's full idle. Now that goes in there somehow. If it fit, need a bit of playing around with. So it turns, and I've got to make that rod because I haven't got another one the length of that to go up to there okay and there's a little spring clip goes in there I'll have a look to see if I've got any other rods I don't think I have years of old carbro crap that one might be easier than that it's got the wrong bottom on it have a look at my stash of carburetors you have a stash of carburetors yeah I've got all sorts of oh, it's got the wrong end on it wrong end on it I haven't got one automatic chokes that might be easier let's see what we can make out of that straighten it out a bit Out of that, I'll probably have to cut it and weld it. Oh, I want to extend that by 18 mil. Douche. I know I need 18 mil in it, so I'll cut a section of that out at 18 mil, weld it to there, and then weld that bit to there because it's um, that bar slightly fatter, so it'll give us a weld. Put a couple of bits of weld on that. And that's the length of the bar we want. Right now, I've got to find a tiny little clip that holds it all together. Ah, there's one. <laughs> that's what you're looking for. Yeah. When you push that through the arm, that goes on there, look. An old charming. That's it. How did you find that? I knew I had some, it's just a matter of where. Oh, it's got 
sort that out. That would be when your choke's off. So when I snap the throttle, that should go down. Which it doesn't. What now? Well, it's finding out where it's tight. There's nothing tight there. Nothing tight there, so it's got to be the rod angle. Don't like it, does it? No. Should work. That's okay. What it is. Probably need to shorten it a little bit. But you can do that by bending this or that now. See, because that should be fully open. But okay. don't know if that's going to wind open to there on the thermo choke. So we'll try it. Right, that in theory should work. In theory, that don't mean shit though. Right, let's fire up to that. In theory working, so you know, unplug the earth yeah. on that thermo unit and then it should cool down and snap it back onto full choke. So we'll try it like that. Oh, I don't think that's getting enough voltage. What tells you that? I don't think it's working properly. Is that from the sound of it or from the... Nah, it's just not opening up fully. So you should be able to turn the ignition on, hold that open and that should just wind itself down, which it isn't doing. Right, so that will open fairly fully, won't it? Try that then. So we'll stick 12 volts up its bum and see what happens. Nothing wrong with that choke. So that's coming right back. We've got to check this little bad boy now. If it winds up that way. You're that bar there, look. That's your choke operator. Yeah? Yeah. So that sits in there and you preload it, you pre-tension it as you wind it on those adjustments, see those marks there? You've got one with a mark on the back and then somewhere on here, there see that little tiny groove there? Yeah. That lines up with that in theory if it's working and then it will say and in a tune-up manual it will say three notches lean or two notches rich which is these notches here and then you've got lean is that way if you want to weaken it off on the choke you turn it that way which will be less pressure on the choke but it's got all the tubes and bits on it where they should be so in theory it should work because they work on vacuum as well so we'll check this out, make sure it does work. Well that, when it's powered up, should unwind itself. Should move either one way or the other, I'm not sure which. Yeah. So we'll pause it if there. Doesn't look like it's doing a lot, does it? <laughs> I'm just thinking how long we were waiting for. Quite a time. Really? Yeah. I would say that isn't working. It doesn't look good, does it? No. What's plan B then? 
Um, order one from the States. So we can do on it. Originally, it's a two barrel carb. I changed the inlet manifold for an idle brock. And an idle brock, I don't know what CFM it is. Um, automatic choke wasn't connected. Made the link bar to make it work. So we know now that when the throttle's open, the choke's working properly. So the only thing that's stopping it is that bimetallic. That isn't working on that bimetallic spring. So we'll have to get another one. All it does is that winds it up onto that. And as it heats up, it rolls itself back. It might be under preload. I doubt it, though. Um, so now what I've got to do, because it's the wrong carburetor and I've bodged it all up, that linkage there is your throttle, which is all wrong. So I've got to bring that over here somewhere, and then this is your kick down. So then I've got to get that on that arm there, that fits on there like that. So that should have a spring on it somewhere as well, so that when it, it kicks down, so when you full throttle, it kicks down to a lower gear on the gearbox. But you can see how it's all out of line. So that probably needs to be the other side of that. It's just all bent, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like it. So I've got to take all of this apart and make all the right throttle, or try and make all the right throttle linkages, because Gordon wants to keep the big carb on it. But that throttle linkage shouldn't be up behind there. Like I said, I've just got to faff around with it all and get it all working, you know? Yeah, that's it really. It's just a day's worth of messing around, trying to work out where all the cables go. And I have another question for you. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Our friend Piper Dougie says, um, would you ever trust a fully automated car, so one without a driver? No. Why is that? having worked on hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cars things go wrong yeah um so the things like teslas they have nowadays which uh i suppose if they had a, a complete the minute something really goes wrong it just shuts the car down but that could be just as dangerous you know if you're going down a motorway at 70 mile an hour and it just shuts down you're in as much trouble as if you can't stop it really yeah you drive straight into somebody couldn't you nah i don't think so next week on the workshop. So 1935 model 95 L, which had lighting, sunbeam. What makes it rare? Just the volume of the one. Didn't make many of them at all. I mean, it's 1935. It's 30 brake horsepower, which is a lot for a 500, and it will do 95, 96 mile an hour. Okay. In 1935, which is pretty fast, isn't it? Quite a handful, really.